So when I agreed to review this printer, I didn't realize how heavy it was gonna be. This thing weighs over 100 pounds. The reason it's so heavy is because of its heated chamber, which is supposed to be really good. On the website, it says you can print with just about any filament you can think of. So the first thing that pops into my mind is I'm gonna print a drone frame. because drones are made of carbon fiber and this printer came with carbon fiber nylon filament. So I pull out my $45 Amazon drone and this happens. Luckily the drone didn't get caught under the hot end which was set to about 15,000 millimeters per second acceleration. That probably would not have been good. So the first print I did took an hour and 10 minutes and this was in PLA and the print quality was flawless which was surprising because the printer was literally being bombarded with drone attacks. So this printer can print PLA well being attacked by a drone. I was expecting it to be good at printing PLA, but the drone attack resistance is also a plus. It also has auto bed leveling, runs on clipper firmware, and also comes with a nice shiny flash drive that I like because it's shiny. Taking a look inside the printer, you can see why it's meant for printing engineering grade plastics. It's got the Core XY design and also an active heating element. At least that's what I think that is. And then it's got like the biggest PC cooling fan that I've ever seen ever. Lastly, you can see that this machine is definitely not intended for PLA. The top cover needs to be removed in order to even print PLA. Now that I had gotten the first print out of the way, it was time to get back to the main objective, which was printing a carbon fiber nylon frame for this $45 Amazon drone, which I had purchased and it was brand new. And I had only gotten to fly it one time. But you know what they say, if you love something, you just gotta let it go. RIP to my new drone. Anyway, I soon realized why this project was going to be more than I initially bargained for. Cheap Amazon drones do not have direct drive motors. So for that reason, for version one, I decided to stick with the default arms of the drone. And so I made this mini little frame that the arms screw into and it holds the battery. I wanted to keep it as simple as I could because I'd never used the slicer before, but it turned out that the slicer was just a reskin of Prusa slicer. So it wasn't all that difficult to get the hang of it. Next, I loaded it onto the printer and after about 10 minutes, the print was finished. And to my surprise, the battery snapped right into place. And just like that, the first version of the drone was complete. I basically took my nice new drone and just made a shittier drone. I am so good at this. I guess one minor benefit is it was lighter by like 20%. So maybe that would benefit the battery life. Let's see if it flies. I'm, I don't know if this is going to fly. Oh. So after I ironed out a few of the kinks, I had managed to get it airborne, but it was very sporadic and had a weird vibration. And I actually completely lost control of it and it flew up into the rafters and got stuck up there. I didn't have a ladder, so I actually ended up using the GoPro and the GoPro tripod and the microphone as a big stick to get the drone knocked free from the rafters. So after a successful first prototype and getting a good feel for the new printer, it was now time to increase the difficulty of the project. Level two. So in order to print in carbon fiber nylon, I would have had to switch out the brass nozzle for the hardened steel nozzle, which is something that you don't want to be doing repeatedly. It's something you don't want to be doing repeatedly because it takes a while. So I decided to do one more print in PLA just to test out the frame and everything else. This thing is held together with zip ties and rubber bands. And because the motors aren't direct drive, I had to make like housings and stuff for the gears. And all the tiny screws are salvaged from the original drone. With this setup, the weight was cut by another 10%. So like my 3D printed creation was ready to take to the skies and fly. Completely ready to soar through the air like a eagle. So then I made some changes. I don't remember specifically what I did, but it started looking Aha! better. The moment of truth was now yes! here. All the hard work and designing and tweaking that I put into this model, all the obstacles I had to surpass, and all the motors are firing on all cylinders. Time to test this thing out for real. It's not working. Why isn't this working? 
What am I doing wrong? It turns out that my PLA motor mounts cracked in half. So PLA was not going to work for this anymore. It was now officially time to put the Cheaty Tech X plus three to the test. This orange filament that I'm holding is called HIPS, high impact polystyrene. I won't get into the specifics, but HIPS has some nice properties that it's lightweight and impact resistant. And I've read online that some people use it for drone parts. I threw on some generic settings and the frame printed out literally on the first try. But yeah, HIPS is actually some really crazy stuff. It was way more flexible than I thought it was going to be. And it was also extremely lightweight. The hips frame was actually about 20% lighter than the PLA frame. But that wasn't the craziest part. What was crazier is when I tested the impact resistance of the PLA and hips. PLA. As expected, the PLA okay. shattered immediately. The frame broke. So, PLA sucks. That was actually the third time that I threw the hips frame at the garage door. And as you can see, it took it like an absolute champ. So my next idea was to use hips for literally everything and to have it be my new daily driver until I realized it's not great for everything. The small motor mounts that I printed out were extremely brittle for some reason and I needed the tolerances on these to be super precise and having any flex in the system was not going to work. Also I thought this stuff might be a little too flexible to be a frame because I knew most drone frames were rigid but there was one area where I thought this plastic could be extremely useful and that was for the propellers. I noticed that the hips and the propellers felt Felt similar, so I thought it might be a good fit. Also, as you might have noticed, I printed out some crazy looking propellers, and this was just a little spice that I threw on there just because I wanted to. These are called toroidal propellers, and they're supposed to be quieter and more efficient. Some smart guy at MIT designed them, and then I took the design and just copied what it looked like. So, to be clear, I had zero knowledge over whether any of the angles were actually good for aerodynamics. So, finding the correct settings for the propellers was actually pretty tricky because the overhang angle was pretty steep. The walls were really thin and hips likes to warp, but eventually I got everything tuned. As soon as I got one of them figured out, printing four at a time was no problem. Now that I had the propellers dialed in, it was time to take this project to the next level. Level three, the final boss. This filament is called PAHTCF. In other words, high temperature nylon carbon fiber. It's nylon filament with carbon fiber. In order to print with this stuff, I was going to need to change out the nozzle. This filament prints way too hot and the carbon fiber will chew up the brass nozzle. The X plus three comes with a hardened steel nozzle and it's actually pretty easy to change it out. But I wish this printer would come with the hardened steel nozzle pre-installed because that's really what this machine is meant for anyway. All right, so here's the results of printing the nylon carbon fiber. Cheese slicer has a lot of pre-built profiles for different filaments and nylon carbon fiber is definitely one of them so literally i just loaded it up hit print and it came out just perfectly the print was literally flawless like there was no there, there was literally nothing I had to do, which is great, which means they're really focusing on tuning their profiles for this thing. As you can see, this frame weighs a little bit more than the other frames. It actually weighs about as much as the PLA. And as expected, the rigidity and dimensional stability were like perfect. This is just a beautiful part. So now literally all the pieces of the puzzle were ready to be assembled. Oh, uh, and boy, did this thing turn out good. The toroidal propellers just look crazy on this. And also like the rubber bands and zip ties just give it a really nice DIY kind of almost like a secret agent improvising on the run from the police and his own government kind of vibe. I don't know if that made sense at all. Okay, so it might not fly. <laughs> I hope it flies. Please fly. What's crazy about this to me was how stable the flight actually was and also the noise level. I'll play a few clips of the old drone so you can hear the difference.
the other propellers just have a higher pitch and overall it's just an unpleasant sound whereas these toroidal propellers sound like lower pitched and i don't know they just sound better to me which holds up to the wikipedia description of what they actually do so what are my uh, thoughts after all this? Well, I'd say for 650 bucks, the X Plus 3 is a great printer if you want to print with engineering grade plastics. It's fast, reliable, and easy. If you just want to print PLA, definitely look for something else because this machine has way too many features for you to just print PLA with it. This is not sponsored by Cheaty Tech. Those are just honest opinions. As for carbon fiber filament, hips, and toroidal propellers, the X Plus 3 printed the carbon fiber nylon like it was PLA. The impact resistance of the hips was unexpected. I would say by far the most shocking thing to me was how good the toroidal propellers actually work. If you're looking for the STLs for this project, I'll leave a link in the description to my Patreon. I release all my projects to my patrons. Also like behind the scenes footage and stuff. Print selling licenses, custom requests. If you enjoyed this video, I would say go on Patreon and please support me. If you don't have the means now, that's okay. A subscription to the channel would do just as well. That's way too much fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you guys want these STLs, uh, they'll be in my Patreon, so join that, support me. Um, yeah, STLs in the Patreon, thanks.